Hi everyone, I am Lavanya, Business Division Lead and I am representing King Below Cycle Lead. A brief introduction about the team. We are a student technical team based at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. We operate on different subsystems under the guidance of faculty advisors to make a working prototype of Hyperloop pod here at IIT Mumbai. We started in 2019 and are comprised of students from various disciplines ranging from electrical to mechanical, aerospace engineering and have both undergraduates and postgraduate students. So returning to the presentation, we follow the problem, proposed a route between two Indian cities, analyzed the cost and revenues and evaluated key parameters for free transportation. Before that, let's look at the transportation scenario and viability of hyperloop technology in India. So as a country with rapid urbanization, a youthful active workforce and strong economic growth, India faces existential questions about how to address urban transit issues, as well as opportunities, <clears throat> industries like services and manufacturing, which are concentrated in and around big cities, need effective as well as dependable urban transportation systems to transfer workers and link manufacturing sites to the supply chain. Because of a competitive and highly qualified workforce, many Indian cities like Bangalore, Chennai have drawn large investments in high technology firms. However, in recent years, metropolitan infrastructure and the transportation system in particular have found it difficult to keep with the influx of business into these cities. So in this case, we make an attempt to investigate the construction cost of a proposed hyperloop system between Bangalore and Chennai and compare it with the existing and proposed transportation systems. Uh, a brief uh, overview of the existing transportation systems connecting the two cities. Both Chennai and Bangalore are met, uh, metropolitan cities in India. Bangalore is the fourth largest city in India, popular for its Silicon Valley of India, which is an IT hub. Some of the world's major IT corporations operate from this city. Chennai is India's sixth largest urban agglomeration city and 30th largest city in the world. It is an important commercial and industrial center housing, the automotive industry and is a port city. Here are the key economic fact, fact, uh, parameters. Both cities have a fairly high population and GDP per capita. Signaling high production of goods and services and strong economic growth. So moving to the current transportation system connecting the two cities, the road distance from Bangalore to Chennai is 345 kilometers. Currently, there are three routes connecting Bangalore and Chennai and the traffic volume between the two cities is high. More than 9,500 PCUs travel every hour from Bangalore to Chennai on the existing roads. The groundwork for a 258km expressway connecting the two cities has begun. Uh, the shortest rail route distance is 359km. Currently, the Shatabdi Express between Bangalore and Chennai is the fastest train on the road. It travels 359km in 5 hours at an average speed of 72km per hour. It has two halts. A proposal for a high-speed railway corridor has been brought up by the Government of India and is expected to be built by 2051. The maximum speed of high-speed rail will be to, uh, three, uh, 320 km per hour. Here are the maps connecting the cities for the proposed expressway and the HSR route. Uh, now I'll hand over to this period, my colleague, who will take us through the cost calculations. Thank you, Lavanya. So, uh, before moving to the calculations, let's briefly e examine Hyperloop's advantages. So, the speeds for the Hyperloop range from 1100 to 1200 kilometers per hour, which is faster than air, maglev and HSR. Uh, Hyperloop can play a role in achieving more balanced and sustainable development of towns and cities, opening up opportunities for growth across a broader interconnected region, uh, with the benefit of taking the pressure off of the largest uh, of the larger cities and to ab uh, absorb additional uh, burgeoning uh, population cost effectively. The Hyperloop system's appeal to India comes from its ability to complement existing transport technologies. Constructing Hyperloop networks uh, to interconnect uh, with the existing high-speed railway or metro projects is possible. 
because of the uh, infrastructure compatibility clearing large amount of agriculture land uh, agricultural land would also not be necessary let's uh, take a look at the cost factor for uh, building hyperloop we are estimating the infrastructure cost as per the boring company's rates for tunnel building and assuming the same route as hsr the cost breakdown here is for a 64 passenger capsule or for freight for or holding a standard 40 ton long shipping container so the boring company prices the tunnel and infrastructure cost at 72 million dollars per mile and the price for port building is estimated to be around 500 million dollars uh, so uh, adding up the costs we see that the cost for the uh, hyper uh, hyperloop uh, at the same rail route of 359 kilometers is around 16.5 billion dollars and at the same time the cost for hsr that is proposed by the government of india is around 10.8 billion dollars for the 359 kilometer route this data may not be accurate as it is, as it is extra, extrapolated from the available data points but it is seen that hyperloop requires higher investment and the result aligns with the estimation by other similar papers next we take a look at the current statistics for uh, uh, traffic and revenue between the two cities we divide the data into two into the road and railways uh, freight carriers the number of trains operating between the two cities is 26 and the freight share by the trains is 30% of the total freight carried between the two cities so per train re- per train revenue between the two cities is around uh, is around 20.5k dollars per year moving forward we compare the pricing of the hsr and hyperloop so we we price hsr at the current average revenue per ton of freight loading for india that is 13.28 dollars and we price hyperloop at dollar 20 that's elon musk's quoted price although it it was for passengers also but we compare the average speeds for both systems hyperloop is way higher it's 1150 kilometers per hour The round trip time between the two cities for HSR is around 2.2 hours and just 0.6 hours for Hyperloop. Uh, we are keeping the number of operating hours the same per day, and we get around 35 round trips for Hyperloop, whereas only 10 for HSR. Moving to the revenue generated per year, we can see that HSR revenue is around 48k dollars, while Hyperloop gives 2 million dollars of revenue per year for a single port, and it is 81% higher. Next, we calculate the number of years to offset the cost of building. Uh, which is around 71% faster for hyperloop and we clearly have a winning situation for hyperloop in conclusion as the initial paper states that the hyperloop is appro- uh, appropriate for markets of 900 miles or less however focusing on market markets around 200 to 500 miles apart may be more realistic and at longer distance uh, because at longer distances the construction costs of the guideway begin to erode any cost effectiveness advantage so the portion of freight market must be highly interested in the high speeds offered by the hyperloop with the increasing e-commerce and manufacturing industries uh, and opportunities having a hyperloop uh, speed uh, speed edge over the others helps offset the initial high investment cost thus hyperloop can easily reach the effectiveness of hsr and express ways and definitely revolutionize the transportation uh, thank you that was all for our presentation we would be happy to answer questions if any Guys, that was awesome. Does anybody have any questions at all? You can type in the chat or raise your hand and turn on your mic and ask. Have you guys made any steps to think about getting this research published maybe? Uh, so right now this is a guesstimate actually so we haven't really dived deep dive deep into the data so we do not have the perfect data points that is a definitely confidential data so we uh, whatever data points we could uh, gather we extrapolated and the data so right i don't think so it is possible to publish this research right now but we'll work on this for yeah maybe in the future once more is added for sure yep definitely Anybody else with any more questions? Okay. Uh, got a quick question. So using the boring company's numbers for drilling a tunnel, how did you guys uh factor in the fact that hyperloop tunnels will have to be 
like bigger and also airtight into your cost estimates? Because from my understanding, you just said, okay, this is how much it costs to drill a tunnel and then how much it costs to put all the, you know, power supply equipment in there. Yeah, so this is what we calculated the one time investment cost. We haven't added the other cost like you said for the uh, power supply and others. Uh, this was given by the uh, boring company. The boring company stated that this is the or the, the full station costs, whatever station cost, uh, whatever stations are being, being built, it's giving us the complete cost estimate. So we took that cost estimate as a uh, point and we extrapolated over that data. 